So, so the model is there. And one of the things that we're now doing is having done all that whole big tour that we did where with Vice President leading, having worked with Pandev, having uh, uh, created some level of stability uh, working, with these, uh, working with the militants, is now to say, okay, as you go state by state, what does the state require? The states require different things. In some areas, the youths are very concerned with massive unemployment. In some areas, is that the environmental issues, they can't take it anymore. In some areas, is that the opportunities that they see in front of them are not even coming home to roost. They're disappearing. So, as, so what we've done, and we've done that in three states now, I think it's a Do, uh, Imo, Delta, uh, there's a fourth one, I can't remember. And we're going to go through all of them. Is to say, sit down with the governor, sit down with the security apparatus that are in that state, sit down with the um, uh, stakeholder communities, sit down with the youth wing of some of these militant organizations. And I've asked the militant, rather than answering these negatively inclined illegal structures of militants, work under the pandemic for a youth wing, which they've begun to develop. So let's sit down on the table. If you have three oil companies in a state that are working there producing 200,000 barrels, the benefits we can confer in that state is the benefit <coughs> arising from 200,000 barrels. It's not benefit arising from 1.8 billion okay. barrels. Okay, so uh, we, we need to go to break. Pardon okay. me. But perhaps <laughs> right. we may have one more item to uh, focus on before we wrap up. So don't go away. Welcome back. It's our concluding moments now with the Minister. Could you tell, talk to us about the uh, National Gas Flare Commercialization Program? What key objectives are we looking to achieve and how soon? Uh, one main key objective is get out of flare. Um, today we're about, um, if I'm not about 70% flare free. Um, so we moved from about 50% when we came to about 70%. Um, United Nations has set a 2030 deadline on, on flare exit. I have set a 2020, so I've set a 10-year mark before that time. And the only way we could achieve that is through what the commercial, commercialization pro and what, what is that? The early sense is if oil companies can't create uh, commercial structures to flare out, in other words, businesses that will trap the flare, you know, you know, bleed them and get finished products and get out and, and put it to use, then they must allow private third-party companies come on their acreages uh, and give them technology that they can deploy to take the flares out. That's the commercialization. And, and we've had massive support from, from the World Bank. In fact, the, the model that we put together has been touted by the World Bank as the best ever in the world, and they're taking it, taking it around. Um, and w what we've done is now we'll be able to capture all the flare sites in Nigeria that, that are still current and force the oil companies either to give us an uh, exit route by 2020 uh, we're going to advertise them. We're in the process of, uh, the, I think the regulations are being looked at by the Attorney General now. Once that is approved, we're going to quite frankly advertise through a bidding process to get individuals into this. And what is, is simple, it, a third party company, maybe a small company, decides, look, I want to f get LPG out of this. They strip the flare, they collect the product, uh, they put it into their own machines, they bleed it, they get the finished product, they send it out. And uh, we believe that collectively, what that, because all companies have always complained about the fact that the reason why they're not zero flaring is, is cost. If there's a cost for the commercialization, NMPC, as the joint venture partner, has to bring his own share. If NMPC doesn't have it, they don't go forward. And they've been unwilling to do it independently. So we, we've now basically opened up that terrain. Uh, I, I think that's one of the major successes of, of, of Buhari, Buhari government, uh, focusing on that and trying to get that um, uh, cleaned out over 2020. That will solve some of the problems in the Niger Delta. I was so worried about. You know, you have some, there's so, there's so much we need to talk to you about, and mm -hmm. we do hope that you get to make our time <laughs> and join like us again. <laughs> the, the impact of that on the electricity sector, exactly. the fact yeah. that, you know, gas is going for commercial Very prices, cool. and yes. the generation companies have to buy at that commercial price mm -hmm. on the local power sector. But mm -hmm. I think you have one yeah, chosen just question. Just this one question. The $25 billion contract issue, which you made reference to in your mail, which yeah. was leaked. No, no, no. Let, let's 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 use this interview and educate Nigerians. <laughs> no, but Nigerians they, are asking they, for clarity. They, 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 the clarity has been there. I did not say there was fraud on twenty-five billion. I gave a series of contracts where I said I would have loved to see better due process in the approval sequences. That, that's all. And, and I think post that the president is stepped in and ensured that everything that needs to go to the board, because that was my issue is going to the board and the board is looking at it and then coming back to him with recommendations. So that, that's, that's all largely taken care of. It, it, it was an internal issue that just got, got blown out and it became a fraud allegation and all that. 
Nobody said anybody stole money, so that, that wasn't the issue. All right, well, Uncle, at that point, uh, we've been speaking with uh, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, uh, Dr. Ibi Kachiku. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you. And that's the show as well. We thank you all for watching. We'll be back tomorrow. I'm Chamberlain or so. Well, thank you for your contributions as well. I'm Maope Ogun Yusuf. And I'm Neota Ibi. Have a good day. The views and opinions expressed by guests on this program are those of the maker and do not necessarily reflect the views, opinions and endorsement of Channels Television.